So they say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, but you know, it would have gone the more subtle route on this homage. Welcome to Machines More. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not sure if this violates any trademarks, so I won't get into that discussion, but let's just say that the source of inspiration for this case it's pretty obvious anyway, right? Either way, I am curious about the implications of having this traditional layout and what it tells us about airflow design because behind this grid, you saw there's two fans there and you know, that's a pretty significant difference there from our NR200. So this one's a newer case, but I'm guessing it's a little less well-known. It's a company I previously never heard of called Anaday and this is their atomic ITX case. It's an SFF mini ITX case that comes in at 19.5 liters and both pricing dimensions and features they're reminiscent of our fan favorite Cooler Master NR200. So big thanks to Anaday for providing this case for review today. Uh, given what I've seen so far and how popular this case is likely to be, I'm not going to do a super deep dive on this one. I'll show you some of the features and how it performs, but I think we might get a little bit more value added from exploring the impact of the front fans here, what that means uh, for the traditional layout, and if NR200 owners are missing out on having those. The front is not an unusual place uh, for fans if we're talking MATX or ATX cases. And even in the mini ITX space, the Lian Lee T150 has a single spot at the front as well. But in terms of SFF cases, fans on the front is actually a pretty uncommon mounting location. And for one, recently, I've only seen it implemented in the Sliger S620, but with a slightly obstructed and compromised airflow location because of how the PSU has to be positioned. In the NR200, the front panel is removable, just like the Atomic case here, but this one's solid and there's no way you could put fans on unless you cut it out and you know do your own hack job there. The Sanaday case caught my eye for this particular reason and it accomplishes this fan arrangement by being a little bit longer than the NR200. And uh, th there is a little bit of extra room required because of that to, to accommodate the fans here. And then also this mesh front panel with your, you know, I don't know, uh, 40 Cooler Master logos here. Um, this is what actually allows the front fans to work. And it's kind of a neat design. In order to stay under 20 liters, the designers had to limit the width of the case. So technically this case only supports air coolers up to 135 millimeters. Although I had no problems uh, getting the D12L to fit in here. And this 145 millimeter air cooler likely represents the upper bound here. It's a bit more cramped compared to the NR200 and that's gonna have some more serious implications for combined thermals. But the height is pretty much the same and we still have room at the top for exhaust fans and you do have freedom to position these fans wherever you like on the available slots, but they do require fan screws. Now this layout, it's gonna be familiar if you've built in a typical PC case before. It's what most would consider your traditional layout. The closure for these panels, uh, it, it, it's a little dated. Um, you know, you, you put it in here, you kind of have to slide it in place and you screw it down at the back. Um, the best cases nowadays just pop in and out with pegs like on the NR200. With this one, yeah, you do have to insert and slide the panels. It seems like something that was popular years ago. It's a curious choice here because if you look at the braces here, there's actually a slot cut out for the plastic clips that typically mate to those uh, toolless pegs on the panels. Panels. They feel a little bit thin. Uh, they've got these removable dust filters. One thing that's nice is if you don't want the top one, you can just pull it off since you don't need it. It's all it's all magnetic. And you typically don't need them for a top exhausting setup, so that will improve airflow somewhat. But I'm really not a big fan of how these look on this side. You can take it off, but you know, it just looks a little bit strange and cheap there. The panels are not fully vented. The GPU side, this is closed off. And typically this type of half ventilation, it's gonna help a side-mounted intaking EIO. It's preventing it from taking in too much GPU exhaust. But in an air-cooled scenario, this tends to be a little bit less than optimal. You have an NR200-esque power supply cage here and uh, plenty of drive mounting points. But overall, this case, it just feels a notch below the NR200, which already has what I would consider average build quality. Uh, one thing though, this has a USB-C front header 
and uh, so there's that going for it. You can also do a vertical mounted GPU in this case too. You just have to supply your own riser cable. I did set up this case with the same components from the NR200 test system just to give it a whirl. And I threw in this 6900 XT gaming OC from Gigabyte. The build process isn't too bad, but one thing I found a little bit annoying was that you had to snip off the expansion slot covers and the location to mount the hanger. Now I'm okay if the vertical GPU position is closed off, but uh, you know, the, almost everyone's gonna mount a GPU here. I mean, yeah, they're perforated, but I would have taken that little step to just remove it, put some re removable slot covers there. So all right, let's take a look at the thermals and the impact of front fans in a case like this. First off, let's take a look at the NR200 and the best configuration for this D12L cooler and these, uh, this GPU. There's not a huge difference for CPU only, but as many of you know already, if you've seen some of my earlier testing with the NR200 for gaming or combined thermals with the vented panel with a non-flow through GPU and without the ability to reasonably mount fans under the card, your rear exhausting setup, it tends to be best with towers and uh, we're seeing that here, even with a higher powered card. So really it's, it's not a huge surprise here. Typically I run the U12A in here in rear intake mode, but that's been more because of the flow through design of the 3080 FE card that was previously in that case. Anyhow, when we take a look at the Anaday case, uh, actually it looks to have pretty competent thermals when considering CPU only thermals. And perhaps that's not too surprising considering this is kind of a similar layout, got the same cooler, RPM, you know, everything is locked and identical. But uh, you know, the limitations of this case, it's panels and the narrower layout, they do come into play when we put this into a gaming scenario. So 100% GPU load here, kind of your average 1440p gaming test here with the AOE4, you know, partial CPU usage, pretty dismal thermals when compared to the NR200 now. Before we add front fans, uh, you've got the suboptimal panel setup and not only are the CPU thermals worse here, the GPU thermals, they're also worse. And actually I thought it wouldn't be this big of a gap, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but you can add front fans to this case, and I think this is that important data point that I'm really, really curious about. And this will give us an idea of how beneficial having a mesh front panel in a case like the NR200 is. And perhaps unsurprisingly, it does help quite a bit for the CPU thermals. It makes sense, right? Because you're putting fresh air directly into the path of the fan here, and you're mitigating some of that GPU exhaust and also the GPU you know, has a cleaner source of air intake around it as well. So all around it's, it's pretty good. For the CPU only test scenario, it does help to the tune of a couple degrees. So, you know, all around, there's actually a quite meaningful benefit to having the front fan option. One thing to note, of course, having the two extra fans, it's gonna add some noise. And in my test case here, I ran the NFA 12 by 25s at 1000 RPM, so it's really negligible if you've used this fan before. But you know the average fan, there's gonna be a bit of a noise penalty here. So just that uh, side note there. So decent case, but it's bigger. You've got worse air cooler and worse radiator compatibility because it only takes a 240 on the side instead of a 280. Uh, you kind of have this odd panel ventilation setup, the build quality, the looks, the feature set, they're all seemingly inferior compared to the NR200. So I really hesitate to recommend, you know, going out and getting one. I think the big takeaway here for me, you know, is having a vented front panel on the NR200 might be a really interesting idea. I'd be a bit wary of making the case longer than it is in order to accommodate the front fans. It's not that much thicker than the NR200's front panel. So perhaps just slim fan compatibility would be a reasonable compromise with still a decent gain there. But based on the gap we saw with the Anaday case here, I wouldn't be surprised to see at least some significant thermal benefit with an NR200 setup this way. So it might take a little copycatting in the other direction, but hey, all is fair and love and war. So I hope you enjoyed this information here, at least interesting scientific test here. So at some point, I'll sum up my thoughts on what I'd love to see in a future NR200. I will leave links for this case and the components down below. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching today.